Good afternoon. It is currently three o'clock on the Wild Wild West Coast in Sugar's World. I have Paris Hilton's birthday party to go to tonight, so I'm gonna teach y'all how to master the art of trashy Y2K McBling makeup. So grab a snack, grab a coffee, and let's get glam with sugar. Starting out with my tried and true one size secure the glow. I cannot get enough of this stuff. I feel like this is a sugar staple at this point. It's so refreshing. Oh, I love it, it keeps me young. So when I got the invite from Paris for her birthday tonight, I was so excited because I had the privilege of working with her a few times last year for Pride and her big performance. I think it was at the Fonda Theater in Hollywood, if I'm correct. And then I ended up falling in love with Paris in Love this past fall when I watched it. It's on Peacock. 10 out of 10 recommend. It is riveting television, okay? I was glued to the screen every second and being able to meet her and work with her it gave me such a different perspective on her life. As if I couldn't love Paris more, watching her show made me get such better insight on who she is as a person. She really is such a relatable queen and I can't wait to see her tonight and party. I figured I should do the ultimate Paris Hilton Y2K in her prime Barbie look. The dress code for the invite is literally sliving Paris Hilton, so put together your best Y2K look. I need to do my makeup and talk because I will be here for hours. I'm seriously so excited to do this Y2K Barbie look. I'm really going back to Sugar's roots. When I birthed up Sugar, she was definitely in her brat style Y2K era, and that was very intentional. Me and Spice felt like no one was really doing Y2K in the dress. Well, no one was at the time. I mean, normally me and Spice were the self-deprecating queens, and you would probably never even hear me speaking highly of myself, but those days are done, because if you speak negatively about yourself, you're gonna start to believe it, and then it will literally manifest into your everyday life, so that's not good. I can hype us up and say, we were the queens that started the Y2K hair. And you know, now it's very overdone, but there's still a time and place for it. I'm not doing the signature spiky buns anymore because you know, she's evolving, but it is fun to kind of go back to those early sugar days and revamp it with my new drag knowledge. Literally this whole week, I was on my hot girl walk, going to Target, have my coffee, and I was just envisioning this look and you'll see at the end with my outfit, but I didn't even have to work with a designer. I went into my closet and was styling a bunch of different pieces. And I really feel like that's when drag gets fun, when there's no pressure. There ends up being so many moving parts with getting an outfit made and making sure it's done on time. And it's nice to just rely on yourself. Not that the designers I work with now would ever give me stress. It's just nice when you can be uh, an independent queen, self-sufficient and do it yourself. There's power in that. It's like, wow, I did this all myself. Go me, pat on the back. I guess I should start with my first time meeting Paris. That was so exciting. It was the day of the performance in June. She was having her big comeback show as a pop star. She personally invited Spice and I and also Sasha Colby and Miss Kylie Sonique to perform with her. She was like, I need the dancing girls, which is Kylie and Sonique. And then she needed her mini drag versions of herself. So who other than Sugar and Spice? <laughs> it's so weird to like refer to us as that. It's like, no, I'm that, I'm Sugar, but it, People that speak about themselves in the third person is so cringe, but I do it all the time. But also I feel like I'm allowed to because I literally have a human doll I'm taking care of, AKA Sugar. So it's not me, it's another person. Well, it's not a person, it's a thing. Well, it's she, oh, we she, let's get the pronouns right. <laughs> so we're at the dress rehearsal, we're going over all the choreo. I had so much pressure on myself because I'm like, girl, I cannot mess this up for Paris. Like the stakes are really high. And you felt the energy in the room. Everyone was really working towards making sure Paris's big night was going to be everything. It's actually the finale of season two. You see Spice and I for a second. Of course, they cut away. But we're there if you want to go and see the performance. But I'll never forget, I was standing on the stage. And out of nowhere, there was no warning. Who walks in? No other than the... Paris Hilton. I let out the biggest gay gasp when I turned and saw her just standing right in the flesh. She was in her full custom sparkly rhinestone moment. And that wasn't even the outfit she was wearing for the show. It was literally just her dress rehearsal look. She's like, just a dress rehearsal look. It was so exciting once Paris finally got there to do the rehearsals because I was finally at ease. I was just picking up on her energy and she was there to have fun and let loose. And even though she was nervous and she told us that, just being in her presence just 
calmed me. It was, it was honestly a surreal moment. I'm like, how did I get here? Because she was such a drag inspiration for me, especially in the beginning. And, you know, she really empowered me to just be that girl. And now she's right next to me and we're talking. It's like, wait, what? Like, talk about manifestation, baby, okay? Now here's a learning lesson for you. I remember Sasha and Kylie were kind of being not too cool for school, but they were being professionals, you know, like how anyone would in a dress rehearsal environment. You're not really going to be speaking to, I guess, the talent, even though we were talent ourselves. Well, I don't know what their mindset was, but basically I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to be too cool for school. Let me just go up to her and talk to her. Like, that's why we're here. So, of course, me and Spice, we go over because, you know, we had to do the dance of her. And we're like, we got you, girl. And she was like, that's it. And she's like, that's hot. Like, she literally is what you would expect. It's amazing. And I'm so happy we had the courage to just talk to her like a normal person because that's literally what she is, just a normal person. Like, why would I be somewhere where she invited me and not embrace her, you know? Honestly, I really found myself relating to her because she was kind of like messing up the steps and so were me and Spice and we're laughing and you know that's the fun part about it it's it's not about being picture perfect it's about living life and connecting with the people around you that's what matters you know you're not going to be on your deathbed and be like wow I messed up that dance move but you will regret not being in the now not being present with people so keep that in mind also, what I learned is in environments like that where the stakes are really high, people are just dying for someone to be an actual person. So the fact that Spice and I could literally just be our goofy selves with Paris, I think it relaxed her, it relaxed us, and ultimately it led to the best performance for that night. Now, one of the crucial parts of this look is your eyes. I would recommend going in with a light contact. I just popped in my Desio Innocent White, and I'm doing this because I'm going to be platinum blonde and in order to get that fake pixel perfect look I need super light eyes to match with the light hair a darker eye has more of a down-to-earth more of a natural vibe and we are not going for natural with this so if you struggle with putting contacts into your eye well you better learn because it will up your makeup game so much i like to think of contacts as putting on a new lipstick or putting on a new shirt it's so fun why would you not change your eye color i mean we're always changing our hair color so you know let's change it all we are versatile queens and sugars world after all so something that has really helped me on my journey as an artist is visualizing how my look is gonna turn out before I even apply any makeup. So I would recommend going to your Instagram saved folders, your Pinterest boards, getting out your inspo and really planning out how it's gonna look. I know it sounds weird to visualize your makeup look before. Actually, no, that makes complete sense. Okay, Sugar, she knows what she's talking about. Visualize how the sleigh is gonna be before the sleigh turns out. And also don't be afraid to use yourself as reference. We should be on our mood boards. I literally have old photos or not of me. Well, I guess it's of me, it's of my makeup. It's funny because Spice and I did this without even realizing when we first started doing drag. We were so passionate about all of our looks. And you know, looking back, it's like, girl, those looks are guttural. But no, those were our early artist days. We were just budding and beginning to get into our creative vortex. But we would do exactly what I just said. We would plan out our looks, every detail from what glitter was going to be on our lid to the shoe and the heel. Now, looking back, were the looks sickening? That's debatable, but we always had a vision. And it took us a minute to figure out the execution, but we always had a vision. So as an artist, if you have a vision, you are golden. So before you even practice any makeup tips and, you know, get all the trending tips, TikTok makeup, sit back with yourself. Maybe go on a little walk out a little up in the clouds and visualize how you want your art to look. And I promise you, the results are gonna be everything. Going in with my Kiehl's under eye cream. Y'all know me, normally I use the Trader Joe's, but it's fun to switch it up. I recommend doing this for every look because it really hydrates that under eye, especially tonight since I'm actually going to be in person with people. I'm not just going to be rubbing this off. I need to be giving in person. That's always my nightmare when you get up close with someone and they're looking at all the creases in the concealer. It's like, no, 
Hydrate those under eyes and you'll be good to go. Today I'm going in with my Holy Grail products. So that means my MAC Full Coverage Foundation. I'm having so much fun trying out new makeup on this channel in my series Unsugarcoated. But it is nice to go with your bulletproof staple so there is no worry. And also, I'd be here all day if I was trying out a million products when I have to leave and the risk is not worth it. Like, what if something completely flops and I can't fix it? So that's why I love having the Unsugarcoated series because I can really play with makeup and the stakes aren't that high if something is really bad. I feel like I'm finally figuring out where I want to go with this channel. And it's not that I didn't have a direction before. It's just I'm a very spiritual, intuitive person. I say it like every video. But I have to go with what feels right to me. You know, doing YouTube, it's a combo of doing what you love, but then also being a value to people. I want to help. I want to inspire, especially when it comes to makeup. It wasn't until this past Christmas when I realized, oh, wow, I am so knowledgeable about these products. I'm such a makeup nerd and it was something I always was kind of ashamed of. You know, with me and Spice, it was always kind of looked at as a bad thing. Like, she was the creative one and then I was the one that was really knowledgeable about all the products and did all the research. And, you know, that's not true. I'm severely creative. It's just I'm equally as interested in how products work and I also love helping people with what makeup to pick out and what products to get because makeup is expensive. And if I can be the little guinea pig to let you know what's good before you buy it, then that is everything to me. And I feel of service and I feel like I can heal even if it's uh, on a superficial level of makeup, it's really not. Doing makeup and getting glam is actually not as superficial as you think. Well, I guess it depends who you are. But for me, working on my outward appearance is actually a gateway to my open heart. And let me know what you think in the comments, but I honestly think when you feel really good about yourself, when you look good, when you are on point and no one can clock, that's when life becomes so easy. I look back at the times when I was in full hermit mode, anti-social, didn't want to be around people, had more of a negative cloud around me. That was the times when I didn't feel good about what I looked like, whether I was binge eating and felt bloated, or if it was a drag look and I wasn't happy with the finished result, I didn't feel confident and then I didn't want to do a lot of videos and then I wasn't working as much. So basically all you need to know is looking good affects your productivity levels, so. Look good and then you'll be productive. Class with sugar, y'all. For eyebrows today, I'm doing the Morphe Pomade. Now, the early 2000s, this was the time of the super thin pencil brows. I am going to do a combo of that. For me, and just being a man, a super thin brow just brings out more of my masculine features, which isn't really the goal for me. I know most queens don't care or they really embrace their androgyny. But for me, Personally, I look at that as lazy because drag for me is a uh, transformation of gender, whether it's male to female or female to male. That's what I like. I'm just going to be honest. Um, that, also, that's why I related to Rue because I know he really values that as well. And if you don't think that's true, just watch the show and who his favorites are and you'll understand. I mean, he saw like chest hair and was like, nope. But also, I get it because it's lazy. And that's just my opinion from doing drag for so long. I understand the mindset of, oh, you know, all drag is valid. But when I was a baby queen, I wasn't shaving my pits or I wasn't uh, padding. And I thought, no, this is just me. When really, it was just I didn't know how to properly do it or at the time it, an extra step of padding or an extra step of shaving my armpits, it would have been overwhelming. So that's just my view on it when it comes to my style of drag. Now that being said, my favorite drag is drag that's different from me. I love the girl that's a goblin in the corner of the club that is turning themselves into a fancy couch craft project, if you will. I love that because it's different from what I do and I can see the art in it and I really appreciate it. And I think that takes a lot of time, but you know, to each their own. So that's why I challenge you. If you have opinions on drag or if you have opinions on makeup or a certain artist, 
Why don't you go out and do it yourself? Time and time again, we see on social media so many people just voicing all their opinions that no one cares about. <laughs> and they're just like unwarranted, hopping on people's pages. I remember a few weeks ago, someone was like, oh, you should have made the choker black for your Cinderella look. And I felt like responding, well, if this was your look, I hope you would do that. But this is my look. So I'm gonna do what I want. The internet is a weird place. It's like we are all leading our own lives. So why do we feel the need to project what we would do onto someone else? It's like, no girl. For me, it's like people that watch football. How could you possibly get enjoyment of watching other people move their bodies and be active? For me, I'm like, no coach, call me in. Let me get in the game. Like I'm actually gonna go on a walk and be active. Well, I guess that's entertainment in general. I don't know. Sometimes I have these thoughts and they kind of just go nowhere. It's just me speaking through my stream of consciousness. So, you know, in Sugar's world, I kind of just word vomit and hope for the best. And y'all understand. Y'all y'all get me. To clean up my brows, I'm using no other than my Tarte Shape Tape. I am on a quest to find a concealer that competes with her. So stay tuned. I'll let you know. But for now, nothing can beat the coverage of this. You all saw in my last unsugarcoated video when the Makeup Forever Hydro Glow Concealer completely flopped on me. Well, it didn't flop. It just, you know, wasn't up to my sugar standard. So she didn't make the cut. <laughs> it's like, who will be on top? It's definitely not going to be sure. Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay, I feel like I got them pretty even. I've given up on my brows being perfectly symmetrical. I don't want to look back at my life and be like, oh my god, there was so much stress over my eyebrows being even. I should have just been living my life. So now I'm being a carefree girly that doesn't care about symmetrical eyebrows. And I encourage you to join that train I am leading because life is way too short to be worrying about fake hairs that we drew on our face to look even. It's like, who cares? <laughs> Why am I yelling? I'm obsessed with this concealer because you only need to apply a little bit and it blends out so flawlessly. I will die on the hill of only ever using full coverage concealer for the under eye because you end up saving so much product. A little bit goes a long way. If you are using a lightweight concealer and trying to get coverage like this, uh, baby girl, you're going to be here all day applying layer after layer. It's going to be like you're in Photoshop class adding the layers. You see what I did there? We want to be layer free. And it's way quicker to just do one little dot, you know? So Tarte Shape Tape Babies, let me know your favorite concealers down below because I need to try a bunch and get back to you. It's like I'm a makeup scientist. Yes, makeup scientist sugar in the house. Bam. When it comes to skin and your base for a look like this, it's really important to bronze it up. Ooh, that sounds like a song. Bronze it up. <laughs> Soak it up. Oh God. Not Monet. <laughs> Not Bob. <laughs> oh, those drag queens I hate, Spice and I. Hey, I know you're watching. Anyways, we don't need negativity on our channel. Well, really, there's no such thing as negativity because it's always a learning lesson, something you can grow from, and honestly, me just being in the drag world and experiencing all of these nice drag queens, <laughs> I've learned so much about human nature, so. I think the biggest lesson here is the girls that I hate the most are really just your biggest fans in disguise, so. Kisses. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy they're watching. Hopefully they can take some makeup tips from Miss Sugar. <laughs> you see Shady Sugar coming out. <laughs> but honestly, we should all start embracing our shadiness. We can't be walking around like limp noodles in this world. You know, people always mistake kindness for weakness and I'm done. I just want to be a bitch. <laughs> well, that's why I have drag. You know, I'm literally painting on the bitchy brow, putting in the platinum hair. So I guess I can cosplay as a mean girl in drag, but you know, it's not cute to actually be a mean girl. It's like, no. Well, what I was saying was just bronze up your skin. Paris always had that super deep tan. I just put on another layer of self tan because you are not going to be catching Miss Sugar looking pasty with Paris. It's just not going to happen. No, no, no. No. When this happens and the shadow comes falling out, I love a mess. This was not my intention. Wow. Okay, we're back to business, but the early 2000s was all about a cool toned eye. We are not adding any warmth here. That was later on once, you know, YouTube developed and we're like, okay, let's actually, you know, bring ourselves to life. 
it's hard to make yourself look good, but cool tones, well, it's not. It's just you have to be more intentional where you're placing your shadow because if something is giving more of a great cast, it could just be unflattering. So it's all about where you place the product. I'm going in with this blue shade, and then I'm going to be dipping into this periwinkle to get a nice, cool tone little wash, you'll see. One swipe of this, and I'm already feeling the Y2K fantasy. I'm so excited to add the glitter. Y'all just wait because... It was all about the frost and just looking really, really shiny and metallic, which is like my favorite. And I feel like I never do it anymore. So this is gonna be so much fun. I feel like ever since really investing into this YouTube channel and living on my own, I know I always say it, but I do feel like a new person. And makeup is just even more fun for me. I mean, makeup has always been very healing for me, even of my darkest days. Like that was the one thing that was gonna get me through the week. I remember living on Long Island and if I was having a hard time or I was just experiencing a lot of contrast, living with my family and wanting to get the hell out, I knew if I did a drag look, I would be like on my high flying disc, I would be feeling so good by the end and all of my issues or problems in the beginning of the day would be gone by the end of the night. And you know, that really is the magic of getting all dolled up. It's a therapeutic experience, and I think my glam girlies on this channel understand that. It's not just about, you know, making yourself look good or, well, especially in my case, it's not about getting male validation because the guys that would be into me would not find sugar attractive, you know what I mean? So it really is liberating when you are just doing it for yourself and because of the art and because you love transformation. The world really does open up when you're not limiting yourself to just getting the validation and external praise from others, whether it's looking good or someone liking you or someone liking your story. It's like, no, we need to give it to ourselves because that is so fleeting. The game changer for this look is using a really pigmented white eyeshadow. I swear by this one. If you don't have, it's a space palette. I don't even know what you would call it. There's just a little moon on it. I'm obsessed. I use her for all of my looks. So really pack into that white and we are going to add it underneath the brow and then also blend it in with that transition shade we just applied. And just look at the difference in that already. I have to fix my brow on top, but just so you can see the difference, look how this is popping and lifting this eye compared to this that's more back and more gray tones. So this will really elevate your look. And once the highlighter comes in, it's all gonna melt together and just be gorgeous. For this look, I'm doing a combo of natural real girl makeup and also drag elements to make me look like a real girl. You know, like Paris, sorry. You gotta be politically correct. I guess there's no such thing as being a real girl. God bless. So if you have a female skeleton, you don't really have to do this step and add the lid because it's a smaller lid after all. It's just, I have more hooded eyes, so I need to do this to bring that crease forward, and it just gives more of a feminine illusion, which is always good in my case. Now we're taking the Stila liquid eyeshadow in the shade Perlina. I cannot get enough of this, and this is gonna act as a base to add our glitter, so it will stick. This look is all about the glitter and the frost and the shine, so when in doubt, Add more glitter. I was trying to rhyme and it's like, no girl, you can just speak in the English language. You don't have to be Dr. Seuss. You don't have to be talking a mile a minute and saying a punchline and wrapping it up into a little bow. Maybe you can just speak normally. Now we're gonna set her with the Makeup Forever Starlit Glitter. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I'm almost positive I used this for my promo look. I remember Irene sitting across from me and of course she was done earlier than me and she's like, girl, what glitter is that? And I was like, it's Makeup Forever, da da da. And that's when I knew the look was sickening. Because when the other girls backstage are like, what glitter is that? That's when you know she's the one. Wow. Oh my God. Court dismissed, bring out the dancing lobsters, we're done. Oh my gosh. It's not picking up on camera, of course, but in person she's sickening, I promise. Now for some detail work, I'm taking an angled brush and going in with a cool tone, darker blue, basically navy blue. And I am just defining this crease. I'm not going in with a black eyeliner like I normally would. This is going to create more of a softer look. And that's what we're going for with this. I don't want to be too cartoon, but I still want definition. So this is kind of the perfect blend. For eyeliner, we're using the one size Point Made. I live for her. Y'all know I've used this practically in every video so far. 
I'm not going to be going out as far. I'm going to keep it a little bit more in my face just to give more of the blend of the natural look. If it was more draggy, I'd be going out to like, you know, where my hairline starts. Think of the line you're making as it's going to connect to that eyebrow. Even if you're not going out as far, like I'm going to stop like halfway. But if I was to connect it, it would go do 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 up to there. So that's a little trick that helps me know where to place my eyeliner. Now the issue is always matching them up. My biggest tip is all about like leaning your head back, sinking low. It's going to be so ugly and the most unflattering positions for your head. But this is how you're going to slay it down. It's all about like seeing how the eyeliner hits when it's back. And then also when you go up because you could be spending all this time doing this. But then when you actually tilt your head forward, it's like where the eyeliner go. So don't worry if you feel like your eyeliner isn't completely symmetrical and it's not turning out good because that's all going to be fixed once you add in that black eyeshadow to soften out those lines. This look is definitely smoky and the messier the better. I mean, I'm trying to be a strategic messy mess with the shadow because, you know, I am a man after all. I am creating new shapes. But if you're just using your natural eye shapes, then blend away, baby. Just keep blending. You know, isn't that what the fish said? Fine and Dory. Is he a fish? No, he's a fish, right? Yeah. I always think of Ellen DeGeneres, God bless. My favorite part for a look like this is always wiping off the bake because we have all that glitter stuff. Oh, look at that. Bam. That's always a nightmare for me. It's like, imagine if it all just stuck. But that's why we bake. I mean, no matter how good a glitter is or eyeshadow there's always going to be a little bit of fallout i don't care who you are you could be a makeup magician for all i care there will be a speck of glitter baby so you gotta wipe away now for the under eyes super simple we're gonna marry whatever we did on the top to the bottom so we're gonna take the same white eyeshadow we used for the brow bone and we are going to pop her in right in the inner corner i'm not doing white eyeliner here today because it's supposed to be more soft smoky and blended that sounds like a single from an up-and-coming artist soft smoky and blended or maybe that's just like the newest coffee at starbucks i don't know then we're gonna go in with the light periwinkle blue and blend that underneath so this is my favorite part i love doing the under eye this step is all about trusting the process because right now this looks crazy but now we're gonna go in with that navy blue shade again and we're gonna connect that outer lower half and it's just gonna make everything make sense. This look is not for the girls that wanna look gorgeous in every step. You need to have faith, trust, and pixie dust to see the vision, okay? I always love looking at the difference of one lash on to one off. Now, something I wanna debunk about eyelashes is you can use the same pair so many times. It's just a matter of cleaning them off and taking care of them. What I just did off camera was I got all the gunk off of this eyelash band. And I suggest doing that to your lashes that you think are dead because it will completely revive them. The only reason why it wouldn't look good on your eye after a lot of uses is because of the glue that's being built up on there. So literally just rip her off, don't be scared. And then your lashes will feel like they're good to go again. Another tip I actually learned from a drag queen named Robin Fierce. So what she does is she literally takes the glue and applies it directly to where she's going to be putting her lash. And this is just a bulletproof way to make sure you don't have the hated inner corner popping up because that was always a struggle for me when I started makeup is I could never get the lash to stay down in the front and then just blow, blow, blow and apply. <laughs> okay, my favorite part of my makeup process, I have been waiting to do this all day. I'm going in with my new fave blush, She's the Moment from Patrick Ta. If y'all saw the last episode of Unsugar Coated, which I know you did, because my girlies in Sugar's World, we watch all the videos because, you know, it's just, it's fun to pass the time while you're doing the laundry and cooking and cleaning. And whenever you need a friend, I'm here. I always start on the outer part of my face and then work my way in. Oh, wow. See? Ugh. Especially with a blue eye, that's cool tone. When you have a little bit of a warmer blush, it's gorge. Now, I'm going against the rules for a Y2K look. Normally, you would apply a pinky, mauve blush that's cool toned. But for me, I'm gonna, you know, do a mix, okay? Also, you have to trust the process. Cleaning up your blush will really change the game for you. I feel like you have to do this step because 
if you're like me and you get a little heavy handed with the blush, this really, you know, makes you look like a normal person again, basically. <laughs> Okay, lip time. I just lined my lips with Whirl from MAC. And then we're gonna go in with Krylon's Lip Stain in the shade Swing. This is a cool tone pink. Also, the liner is a cool tone. It, it's showing up a little bit warmer on camera, but you know, just don't go with your orange lip liner for this. You definitely want a more cool tone because we're gonna have, you're gonna see. This look is really all about that ombre look and having the frosty pink in the center. So it's just about going back and forth looking at it, using your fingers, blending the lip liner into the lipstick, and you're gonna get there. Just just, just trust the process. To top her, we're going in with Fenty's Gloss Balm Sweet Mouth. I love that. Ooh, I'm a sweet mouth. Well, uh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, this is what I needed. Look how pretty. You know, I think we're just gonna leave it at that. I was gonna apply highlighter to it, but my lips are just gonna be crunchy and gross the whole night, so this is getting the job done. Are you surprised? I'm using my Marilyn Monroe Cool Champagne Highlighter from Wet n Wild. This is what gagged me in my last video already. Wow. So reflective, so pretty. And this is acting as a base for the chunky glitter. Well, not chunky, but glitter we're about to apply. I'm obsessed with the Lemonhead glitters because they're not chunky. They go on so smooth. From the Lemonhead glitters, we're using the shade Space Paste. I'm doing her because she has more of a cool tone vibe. So let's see how this looks. Oh. oh my God. Look how gorgeous. This is literally making my entire look. Oh my God, I'm gagging. I'm so gay. I'm gagging. It's like, girl, wrap it up. This at the party tonight in low lighting, bitch, is over for the girls when Sugar walks in. But that's how we should all feel when we walk into a room, you know? If you don't think you're the baddest bee in the room, then someone else is gonna be. So don't let them be. <laughs> She's almost done. I completely forgot to mention that Jaden and Marley and Spice are also meeting me at my place. A limo or a car is coming to pick us up and then we're on our way. So thanks Paris for sending a car for us. They're about to be here any second, so I'm kind of pedaling to the metal. I'm trying to bump up my hair right here, so let's see what kind of contraption I can do. I'm thinking I'm just going to lightly put this here. See, because I want volume in my hair about teasing it, so this is kind of the way to do it. This looks crazy, but I think this should give me the volume I want. I just hope it doesn't fall off. Okay, let's kind of pin her in a little bit. My favorite line, pin that girly in. First wig, we're laying her on. Okay, y'all know me with my two wigs. Ooh, okay, they're calling, they're here. We'll be back. Guess who's here? Oh. <laughs> the birthday girl and the not birthday girl. <laughs> the birthday girl's bestie. Can we, can we get a little outfit of the day for the birthday girl? I mean, come well, on. Vintage Victoria's Secret. Yes. It's giving 13 going on 30. You can see my yes. undies. It is love. right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Paris is going to die for this. Yeah. No, I, I When she tried it on, I was like, I felt like it, yeah. it looked like one of those like long maxis that like yes. Paris wears, you know. Jade, sir, we need an outfit of the day. And the Vintage Saint Laurent. Via. Oh. Zebra. Miley's favorite print. My, oh, I personally requested this fit yeah. for myself. Yeah. And we have a little zebra. We're kind of matching so with the zebra. Uh, Marley, I look at this three right yeah, here. This is like a I know. We uh, are. This is going to be like. Boom. But then spice will yeah, be, but then spice be in the black and then it will yeah. like all, it'll be like That's a, why she um, wears black because that's the only way she can stand out. Otherwise, <laughs> she just blend right in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one more to add, it's the, um, the whole crew. Yeah, Marley, literally, she's the birthday girl, but I literally had her corset me out because, I mean, that's what friends are for. It's an honor to participate. <laughs> oh, you gotta show them the purse. You gotta show them uh, the purse you, you're wearing. Merce is in the purse. Oh, yes. Even like Bella Hadid, like, I was like, at the Beverly yes, Center, yeah. and one of the like, she was probably like 17 girl working there. She was like, ah, the bag! And she was like, upset. She was like, I'm getting haunted by these ads. It was so, me. So I was her. Yeah. I was a drag yeah. at the me, mall. It was me. I was her. Okay. on and drag. Like, <laughs> oh my God. We ran what? into Betsy Johnson, and I talked no. to her. I told Betsy Johnson that she was iconic. I had to. That makes me so happy because. I mean, it's like, how do you not say something to Betsy Johnson? You know? I know, I know right? Imagine. That she's iconic. I loved her because I found her on ANTM and she was doing the cartwheels. I think she was like the first like designer I knew who, who she was, you know, where right. I was like, oh, this is like people do this. 
I love this wig. I love the darker. Um, the root. I think that's kind of a newer thing for sugar. Kind of yeah, you, you don't have to worry about blending the hair that much when it's the darker root, you know? But we live. We Yes, we live. I'm so happy about doing this hair because back in the day, Spice would have never let me do hair this simple. Yeah. But I'm like, let me know, girl. This is my <laughs> life. I'm the superstar drag queen of my own world, yeah. so I will do what I want. Sugar's world, baby. Wait, get in. It's cute. Me? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, they're not going to come for you. <laughs> no, it's funny because back in the day, Spicy Cans, aka my drag mom, she would have never have let me worn as simple of hair as this, even though it's really not simple. It's... It's a lot of work to finesse her. I feel like living on my own now, I can do whatever I want. It's amazing. And that's how you really expand as an artist when you do what you want, you know? Well, and it's giving. Should I wear, should I do this to be more Y2K or just keep it classy? Like so that? I don't think we're missing anything by not getting there exactly at the, the first hour is just people filling in anyways, you know? Uh, do we think like Kathy Hilton and the girls are going to be there? Oh, babes, you know me. Oh, it's going to be the same. Uh, we're going to be getting all of the house. We have to fight Kim. We have to fight I'm going to be like, Kim, oh come on. We gotta Spice, say hi. Oh so uh, Sugar's World. Hi. Are y'all ready? Well, bend spice? over, girl. Wait, back up because we are the tall girlies right now. Well, but oh, let's get a heel shot of Wendy Williams shoe cam together. Ding, Bia. ding, 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 ding. Yes, Marley J started getting in. We're about to call the car. Oh, see, I, we knew it. It was going to be. It's a gradient. See, we have oh the. Oh my god! Oh my god! god. Oh. The I love how the mood board Paris sent like a. A Y2K pink mood board, and I was like, you know what? This is my version of Y2K. No. Like, yeah, it's exactly. indie sleeves 2009, 10 ish. No, I babe, it's giving the gift. It's, it's giving the gift. Yeah. Yeah. It's giving yeah. the gift. Ready, wait, 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 show, show, show a close up of the makeup, Bianca. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's like OG us, <laughs> but elevated. No, we literally get, I walked in and we both screamed at each other. I know. Oh my god, you look so tan in Paris. Yeah. Oh my god. She's Paris. Sugar got me on the titty contour too. I was like, oh, well, she can't have me looking like a man over here. So <laughs> she got me to up it a little Spice bit. Spice you know. titties. Wait, yeah. do we both have crowns on? Huh? Um, well, no. Well, I'm oh, yeah. metaphorically, right? Girl. Oh, okay, we're going to do shots. shots okay, and then yeah. we're going to go to the event. Bye. My, I love how we're like crouching over. It's been because like, we're so tall. Be back in a minute to do stuff. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh my god. Oh, 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 Thank you. Cheers. Tonight we're having fun. I never have fun in drag. I'm always in the corner taking care of some bitch and their lace, aka Spice. But I'm living my best. Cheers. Hot girl dinner. Happy birthday, Mom. Love you, Paris. Oh my god, I just met Paris Hilton. Oh my god. That's hot, that's set. I love Jaden and Marley, Posse forever. Oh I'm the biggest Paris Hilton fan. I love them. Kim, you're amazing, sweetie. She's got healthy hair. And that's hot. Sugar, look at me. Sugar. Baby. Hey, hey. Hey, baby. Hey, baby girl. Say, it's my world and you're living in it. It's my world and you're living in it. My two daughters. 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 Hi girls, the lash hey. is wonky, and uh, but, but did we slay it down? The ankles are broke. We did. We, we still slayed it down. We got and a lot of data. You know what? Let we, me say the this. The data was I collected. Think, uh, uh, when you guys walked in, every single girl in that room wanted to take a photo with Sugar and Spice. And we have well, a few more. Well, I said I'm Paris, baby. And we have a few more enemies, but a whole lot more friends. Well, yes, we saw Miss Law. I was calling her Miss Law, Miss Law Demi. Demi. And she was calling Gigi Gorgeous Gregory, and well, I said, of course. Of course. And we, who else? We well, saw Manny and Laura. Oh, yes, yeah. we're going to do their podcast. We love oh, them. Also, Miss Aaliyah's intercourse. Inter intercourse. Girl. Aaliyah's intercourse. Is intercourse. We are obsessed. Like, oh my I, god. Oh, wait, we have fun together. Me and like, Spice are never we like, we've never had fun in drag together because it's always like a work moment. Right. Drag race kind of traumatized us, but now we're in our fun era. No, they're we in, out of their trauma. Wait, you guys are in a good fun on yeah. um, Sugar and Spice. We were all together. So we were with this like Parisian designer. Oh, and he the was designer, I said, I said yeah. let me introduce you to Sugar and Spice Jean Mappel. <laughs> 
Jean-Mapel. Jean Jean wait, wait, wait. Jean-Mapel. Jean wait, Jean 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 uh, wait, what is it? The Don't she, look at me like that. Say la vie. Savant. Well, Savant. Savant. we're singing Countess Luann. We're going to go back to the posse house and give. I don't know how much longer I have. Girl, we'll you're about to we'll Just we'll untuck, let that thing we'll, out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let loose as a let loose. On that note, we're gonna go shave our grandma's back. Bye. 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 Is the car here? Wow, we're sitting no, we're here. Right here. We're at the house.